What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel, guys. Good to see you all here this afternoon. Wow, I had a minor heart attack before I actually went to go live, and YouTube gave me an error. It said, live streaming not available right now. And I was just like, okay, interesting. Uh, so I ended up resetting it, but everything looks to be working normal right now. So I think we are good to go. I'm excited for today's stream. I hope you guys are. I hope you are all doing fine on this lovely Thursday afternoon for myself, evening some of you, morning some of you out west. We are headed out west today to Los Angeles, K-L-A-X, from Phoenix Sky Harbor, a classic America West route. Good old cactus love. We're going to be operating flight 577 today. Out of Phoenix Sky Harbor, we are also going to be, be back on the beloved network of Pilot Edge. Now, I've been doing a lot of VATSIM stuff. Love VATSIM. Nothing against VATSIM. For this stream, however, we are going to be talking specifically air traffic control. So I have a page and a half of notes and stuff I want to talk you guys through. I'm going to kind of walk you through some basic tips and some information that will help you gain confidence in flying on a network. If you haven't flown on an air traffic control network yet, I highly recommend that you get you watch this video first, get some confidence, and then give it a shot because it will totally change the level of realism and immersion to your desktop sim. So I had to have guaranteed service across the flight path, so that's where I went with Pilot Edge today. Uh, Friday night will probably be on VATSIM. It'll be a lot of fun, a lot more traffic on VATSIM. So I hope you guys are ready to learn something. I've got my notes here, and it is a shorter sector in route. It's only about an hour and five minutes or so in route, including the departure and arrival, so there's not a lot of downtime. So we're gonna take our time getting through the setup, going through the steps that need to be taken in order to get um, from A to B on a network. So we're in the Flight Factor A320, sport the awesome, awesome America West livery, exclamation point livery. If you want this one here, this is Gerald McGinley's livery, uploaded it on the Discord. It's pinned in the livery section, as well as the livery, exclamation point livery link should work. There's also a PayPal link there for him if you want to give him a couple bucks. So I think it's highly, um, I mean, it, it's definitely worth it. The quality of his liveries are are unbelievable. So we are in the Matavia mod, however, so the cabin is not customized. This is a, the updated Matavia mod, so I just have the default Matavia mod cabin. But anyway, let's talk about getting the aircraft set up for network flight. I'm not going to give you a Pilot Edge tutorial on how to install that. It's relatively simple. It only takes a few minutes to install the Pilot Edge plugin. That sim, of course, is a little bit different. We're already connected, we're already go. This isn't a Pilot Edge tutorial, this is a communications tutorial. So we First thing is going to be like anything that we do from on any flight, right? Let's get the airplane set up. Let's get the power on. Let's work through our flows. So we're going to get in here, and I'm just going to go through my overhead here. 27 and 28 volts. That looks good. Battery one. There's our off light. Battery two. I'm going to start powering up. We'll go ahead and see. That is green. Good. Okay. External power can come online. Let the aircraft wake up here. We'll get the nav light on. Crew supply oxygen can come off. Ground control push button is on. Normally, we stay do the standby, wait for the on-bat light. We all know that by now. I'm just going to skip that step since we've discussed that in the past. I don't need all these overhead lights. Let's turn that down real quick. Leave the fuel pumps off. We'll say we already did the fire extinguisher test. That looks good to me. And seatbelts can stay off and emergency lights can stay off right now as we're just getting the aircraft woken up here. Self-test in progress. And while that is booting up, my first tip I have for you on getting on a network or flying on a network is fly an airplane that you are proficient in, all right? Because a lot of guys may just want to get on a network so bad and they take an aircraft that they really don't know how to handle yet. I would highly suggest if you're going to get on a network for the first time or maybe you've, you've kind of got on a network before and then you uh, were a little bit nervous and you ended up getting off the network, what you need to do is get in an airplane and fly it off network. Make sure you know how to do all the little things that may be asked of you when you're flying with air traffic control. Can you do holds? Not very typical in VATSIM, definitely typical, not so much on Pilot Edge, but know how to do holds, know how to do program descents, know how to do um, you know vertical restrictions and things like that. If you have that basic understanding of the aircraft down, 
then you're good to go. You don't want to hop onto the network in an airplane that you're unfamiliar with. You know, for me, getting get even I'm familiar-ish with the Zebo mod, a 737, but still getting on a network in the 737 is a lot more workload for me because I'm just not super intimate with the systems as I am with an Airbus. So pick an airplane that you have extreme confidence in first. All right, we'll continue getting the rest of the aircraft set up here. We'll clear out that NAP TCAS fault. That's not a big deal. We've got all our doors open, and we'll come over here to our init page. I do have updated a database. So this is another big thing. Make sure your database is updated, whether you use Navigraph or I don't know if there's another program out there. Make sure you do have the proper database loaded before you try to get on network because they're going to give you a clearance, and if you don't have the information that they want, it could be a problem. So, you know, I think I did that on one stream where we didn't have the exact arrival. It was a glitch or something. We were missing it, but we just created it by making the waypoints. That's fine. Not recommended. Definitely illegal in real world operations. So make sure that you have uh, a current database. All right. <laughs> so OT says, so in short, the best first flight would be to take the 727 into a Friday night ops. Yeah, I don't know about that, man. I did a 727 stream out here when we went from seattle to salt lake or something on vatsim good night that was crazy that is a workload of a bird all right here we go initialization the workflow for working with an air traffic controller is going to go like this you're going to have to file your flight plan then you're going to have to listen to the atis going to get your clearance then you're going to talk to ground then tower departure and so forth now when i say file your flight plan this is often overlooked on networks and i was overlooking it pretty pretty heavily when i first got on pilot edge trying to feel out the network and see how it works when you go to file a flight plan don't just pick some random fixes and waypoints because they're going to give you the most realistic route out there so i actually recommend several ways of getting your flight plan probably for me at least in north america a lot of this a lot the easiest, and they have it for all over the world too, but it's um, flight aware. If you look up routes from your destination or from your departure airport to your destination, look up real world flights and look at the route the aircrafts are flying. That's what you need to file. So that's my number one. You also have Sim Toolkit Pro and Navigraph to kind of calculate routes in between off airports. Maybe there isn't anything that is flying currently between the two airports, so you got to use something else. Use Sim Toolkit Pro. Um, sim brief will auto calculate your stuff there's a bunch of different programs out there but make sure you file a decent flight plan because when you go to pick up your clearance especially on pilot edge they're gonna give you something realistic as close to the real world as possible so if you have something way off they're gonna be like uh yeah here's your new clearance full route be ready to copy and then you're just gonna end up in a snowball of issues trying to get that all um, all together so fire your flight plan Get the ATIS, and then we're going to talk to Clarence. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We filed our flight plan. ATIS, I already have it for uh, Phoenix. It's information tango. We'll cover that. But we can do some basic things in the box here first. So we'll do our basic Phoenix to LAX. I know a lot of this stuff is basic information for you guys, but I have to cover the very basics on this video. We're going to talk a little bit more. There'll be some more information for you guys that are more familiar with with flying on a network too, but it's just, I have to cover all my bases, right? So where our tarp altitude is 360. Make sure you file proper direction. Westbound is going to be even, eastbound is gonna be odd. So we're 360, IRS init, align on ref, confirm the alignment, that looks good. Now what you can do is go ahead and start programming your flight plan. But in real life, as in real life, is I would recommend that you wait to program your flight plan until you get your clearance because there could be a change, a runway change. And this is kind of where the ATIS comes into play here. I already picked up the, I guess you can call it uh, data link ATIS from Pilot Edge, Information Tango. I know they're departing runway eight. The winds are pretty calm. It's a hot day there, 35C, good night. We should probably get that APU fired up, get some air on the airplane. But make sure you know kind of what to expect when you start programming your route. So that's why I would wait until you get clearance. So we already have our ATIS, so I'm gonna just put in the departure. I know I'm gonna get runway eight, that's my anticipation. And I'll put the Keens to departure in there and we'll insert that and we can just leave it like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my clearance before I fill out the rest of this flight plan. 
So I've got that set up. I can do some other basic stuff here. I can come to the init B page. Let's take a look at our fuel. Let's go ahead and load up. We need 8.7 on the fuel. Go ahead and set that. Wait, request it. Well, that's a lot of gas. We don't need that much gas. We'll do 7.4. And 7.4. Perf data. 24.5, 55.1. That looks good. So those all check out. So I've got that set. I'll leave my takeoff data blank. But I can set up my secondary here while I'm waiting. So I'm going to do secondary, initialize, Phoenix to Phoenix. And then we'll just put in, we're departing runway 8. So if I blow an engine or have something goes wrong, I'm going to come right back around to runway 8, long dry runway. Throw in the ILS to 8 and then perf data. We're just going to go to the approach phase. That's all we care about in the secondary, right? And according to information tango here at Sky Harbor, temperature is 3.5. Winds are 0 for 0, so calm winds, typical summer day out in the desert. And the altimeter is 2 niner and 9 or 6. Now I'm just going to put 200 here in the DH for the return. All right, so I got my secondary set. So I've got basic information set up now. I'll leave it on this page here. I'm going to put KPHX. And let's go ahead and tune some frequencies. So now that we've got... <laughs> I just saw this good question popping in. I'm trying not to get too involved in the chat just yet. I want to get a uh, set up, and then I'm going to go through the questions and tap. But this is a good one. Could you do a comparison between VATSIM and Pilot Edge when in flight? Would love to hear that. Dave, I want to talk about that real quick here before we actually call for our clearance. A lot of guys fly on VATSIM. They're afraid to try Pilot Edge, and they're not really proficient on VATSIM. So they think, well, if I'm not proficient on VATSIM, I'm not going to be proficient on pilot edge. And that is true, but this is what I would recommend, even for someone who hasn't started anything yet with no VATSIM, no pilot edge, you've never done an online air traffic control flight. The way pilot edge works is much more realistic in the sense that you go through the proper frequencies listed on your charts. So in a way, I think pilot edge is actually easier to follow than VATSIM. Now VATSIM has its own limitations, right? Because sometimes you have an approach controller, he's going to do ground, he's going to do clearance, he's going to do uh, departures. So that can be confusing to someone who doesn't really know the system. And honestly, it's, it was confusing to me just getting into VATSIM because I was like, wait a second, I don't understand how these frequencies work. So I can understand that fear from a desktop simulator enthusiast being like, well, I don't really know how to do the VATSIM thing. So what I would suggest is you actually start on Pilot Edge. Because if you get the basics down and you learn how to do it properly on Pilot Edge, VATSIM is going to be a walk in the park. Your only difference is going to be the frequencies. And, you know, VATSIM has its own little plugin that'll show you. I know XPilot will tell you the frequency which you need to tune. So it's really not that big of a deal. But if you start right, teach yourself correctly the first time. That way, you'll have that principle moving forward. If you just do a trial period on Pilot Edge, whatever, and then you go to VATSIM, you'll already have that confidence knowing you know how to do it correctly, and you're just going to have to tailor that a little bit for VATSIM. So that's kind of my spiel on Pilot Edge for VATSIM. A lot of guys say, you got to do VATSIM first. Honestly, I disagree with that. I think if you do Pilot Edge first and learn the correct way to do communication and the correct way to find frequencies, it's going to help you moving forward. All right. So we have information, Victor, we know that. So we got to call our clearance delivery. So Phoenix clearance is on 18.1. We'll go ahead and dial them in here. And before I call up clearance delivery, let's talk about getting an ATC clearance. Three, clear to Albuquerque as file. All right, we're going to turn her off just real quick so I can get this thought out there. Clearance delivery. This is where you're going to get your, fly, your, your flight plan the actual one you're going to fly. It's, it may be different than your filed. It may be exactly the same as your filed. You have to be prepared. So a couple tips for copying down a clearance. The word, is there a notepad in here? Can I like type on this? Oh, nope, I can't. I thought I could, oh, wait a second. Oh, I can't, okay. So type, can I do, 
Oh, I, I can't. Okay. C-R-A-F-T. Some of you private pilot guys may have heard this. If you're starting out and you want to copy your clearance down, write this vertically. So it's like C-R-A-F-T. It makes it a little bit easier to so you have a line for each one. This is the format that you're going to get your clearance back from, at least in the U.S. I know Europe is a little bit different. Europe is actually easier. Um, but use this acronym right here. And let's go ahead real quick, talk through it. CRAFT. The C in CRAFT is your clearance. This refers to your clearance limit. 99.9% .9 of the time, this is going to be your destination. The reason for that being, if there is something wrong saying they, they can't clear you all the way to your destination, they're going to hold you on the ground. Now, I think I've had a clearance limit fix maybe one time in my career, and that was because I called for a pop-up clearance in the middle of a, in the middle of a flight. It was uh, it was a freight flight and I was on VFR a VFR route and I had to get an IFR clearance and then because I was just kind of out of the system they said okay I can only clear you this far until we work you in sequence but 99.9% .9 of the time your clearance limit is going to be your destination so you can even pre-fill that one out you could say all right my C and craft is going to be LAX boom R what is R R stands for route this is going to be your route to the destination or your clearance limit. I have to put that or in there. Like I said, 99% of the time, it's gonna be your route to the destination. A tip about routing. Before you call clearance, go to your airports and familiarize yourself with the names of these departure procedures. Because if you aren't familiar with one, and you don't have to memorize them. Just kind of look at look at the names. Like, okay, you got Fort, Firebird, Keens, Mobile, Marble, Quacky. Just go through them real quick. Just look at the names because if you hear something different that you have never heard before, when you're trying to copy your clearance, you're going to freeze up right there and you're going to miss the rest of the clearance because you're trying to figure out how to spell the departure that you don't even know what the controller said. So kind of look over this and you'll you you saw that happen to me a lot when we were on the euro tour and i was doing picking up an ifr clearance on vatsim and i'm like the what departure and sometimes it's a very bad habit and i will admit that i do this is sometimes what i'll do is i'll just kind of like try to mimic what the controller said because i'm like well i'm just going to look it up uh as soon as i finish the transmission and i don't want to miss the rest of the clearance so i copy down the altitude the transponder the, the, the all that stuff and that's a bad habit to get into if you don't know what the departure is, just leave it blank, copy the rest of the clearance, and then you can read back everything but the departure and then ask the controller again. That's the proper way to do it. I have a bad habit of just kind of mouthing, kind of like saying what the controller, what I thought they said. Um, and I will say the VATSIM controllers caught on to that. There was a couple times where they came back and said, verify it was the snowball or whatever it was. And I'm like, okay, yeah. And it's just because I, I didn't do what I'm telling you guys right now is to just glance over those departure procedures because you may get something different. All right, moving on to the A. A is going to be your top altitude. Most of the time, they're going to give you, if you're flying a jet, they're going to give you a top altitude of, you know, something relatively low. They may give you a climb via SID. We're going to talk about vias here in just a second. But the A stands for altitude. They're going to give you a clearance altitude, and whether it's climb via SID, that's going to be the top altitude on the SID, or it's going to be accept, maintain 10,000. And then they're also going to give you an expect your cruise altitude at a certain time. Now, in modern day clearance, they kind of uh, omit that I hear sometimes on the radio. So, But that's just all that is, is your altitude. F is frequency. That's going to be your departure frequency. They do not always read back departure frequency. Most of the time here in the States, anyway, I've noticed that the controllers are kind of dropping the frequency on the readback of the clearance if you have to call all of almost all our clearances are pdc now but even if you have to call you uh you just sorry i lost my train of thought there um anyway so frequency departure frequency they may not give you the departure frequency because they expect you to look at the sid that you're flying so again, it's important to know which SID you're on, because if you don't know what SID you're on, you may not have the right departure, departure frequency. So they may not give you that vocally, but they can. That's departure frequency. And T, transponder, that's your squawk code. What are they going to give you your squawk code? So if you're doing a VFR flight, you know it's going to be 1200. But that's a quick way to write down an air traffic control clearance if you have 
you know, if, you, if you're new to writing down clearances. I'll write down craft and then you can just fill it out. Boom, boom, boom. And it'll make things a little bit smoother for you. All right. So now we know how to copy down clearances and I'm gonna do exactly that right now, guys. I've got a little sheet of paper next to me. I've got craft written out. Now over time, you're gonna develop your own shorthand. I don't necessarily write craft anymore. I just write in the same format, but that's after years of copying clearances down. But start out writing down craft. Let's give these guys a call, pick up our clearance to LAX. I swear I'm going to get to the chat a little bit more as, as the workload gets uh, gets released here, guys. Good afternoon, Sky Harbor Clearance, Cactus 577. I'd like to pick up IFR to LA with Tango. So this guy's working to control. Phoenix 577, Phoenix Clearance. Good morning. You're clear to the Los Angeles International Airport. Keens 2 departure. Messy transition has filed. Coming via the SID. Expect file 3605 minutes after departure. Departure 119.2, squawk 2443. All right, we're clear to LAX. Keens 2 departure. Messy transition has filed. Climb via the SID. Expect 3605 minutes after departure. Departure frequency is 192, squawk on 2443 for Cactus 577. All right, so this guy is obviously busy because he's working a couple of sectors and he, he rattled that off pretty quick. I'm going to tell you something right now. Do not let that intimidate you. It is better. Here's your next tip. It is better to sound dumb than to look dumb and cause an accident, get a pilot deviation, a go around, anything like that. It is better to sound dumb than look dumb. So if you didn't copy all of that, all you got to do is rekey the mic and could you say, uh, Cactus 577, please say again. Say again is going to be such a crucial phrase for new guys getting on a network. But again, if you have that craft format written out, I didn't have to write hardly anything. I knew I was going to go to LAX. So when he said as filed, I don't write as filed. I just wrote AF. And then he said climb via SID. So instead of my top altitude, I know it's going to be climb via SID. He said, uh, he also gave me my filed 360 in five minutes. So I know if I lose communications, I can go to 360 five minutes after departure. That's a little bit more in depth for a later discussion. But uh, he gave me the departure frequency of 19.2 and then a squat code of 2443. So just like we talked about, the same exact format that we just talked about. And uh, yeah, so that's all it takes, man. That's all it takes is just a simple jot down of the notes there and we can go ahead and program our box now so we already know that we have the departure in there now we're after uh, let's look at let's actually look at it here so all the way out to mezzi this has us out to iso okay so iso and then messy so that's our next fix we're gonna go m-e-s-s-i i'm gonna throw that in there insert thank you so much ifatc inside a flight man I did not get a message with that, but thank you so much for your two pound donation, dude. Appreciate it, man. Really appreciate it. So out to Messi, and then I just have the rest of my flight plan that I filed. So uh, I'm just gonna pop this out so we can look at it as we build it here. So if it's a short flight plan. After Messi, we're gonna go direct to Eastwood, which is E-S-T, Whiskey Delta. Insert that, and then we're going to pick up the Hollywood 1R nav into LA. I'm going to expect uh, probably ILS 25 a left. 25 is south side, right? Sure hope so. That's that man, that tells you how long it's been since I've been to LA. Hollywood one. Uh, no transition. Let's take a look real quick before we put that in the box. Let's look up LAX. And let's see. How do I get back? There we go. Jeez. K L A X. And let's look at the arrivals real quick. Hollywood one. Hello, Cell. <laughs> What's up, guys? I see you in the chat there. I um. I wish I, I will get to the chat a little bit more here as soon as we get off the gate, but just want to make sure I get this down. Circus Seawood, that's an approach via, and I'm going to select Sivu because that's technically what I filed. 
and then the arrival is the Hollywood one no transition because we're coming from Eastwood all right so what's going on with my f that doesn't look right let's see that's our messy Eastwood and then from Eastwood it's we should have a transition there for the arrival I wonder if that's still a bug for this thing here oh no there it is transition Eastwood I must have just missed it there we go insert that now we might have two Eastwoods because it's a flight factor let's see nope oh it looks like they cleaned that up so we got Eastwood McQueen, Melder, perfect. All right, flight plan's in the box. We already did our secondary. We can get rid of that, get rid of that. That goes back to arc mode. Scroll that down, constraint mode on. Secondary's been done, rad nav. Let's take a look at our departure procedure. There's really nothing to hard tune out of here. I mean, I guess, no, there's really not. Our nav departure, so leave that blank. And it B is already done. Perf page, let's get our speeds in the box. 33, 33, we're gonna do 131 on the V1. We'll do a flaps one. No flex yoga takeoff, guys, out of here. Transition out 18,000, thrust reduction 2640. That looks good. Perf speeds are set. We just got to throw in our squat code down here, which do I not have it bound? I do not. That's all right. Our squat code is 24, 43. And for pilot edge purposes, I'm going to squawk altitude at the gate. I know they like to see that. Um, at least that's what I was told last time. So wouldn't necessarily turn that on in real life. But we got 2443 on at the gate. And a little pro tip. We have our departure frequency of 19.2. I'm going to put that in the uh, first officer's COM 1. 19.2 standby just in case. Just like that. And then I'll, just in case I need it. But. 18.1 was our clearance. Now back to our 10.9. So we know we're going to talk to ground control next. We don't push from a ramp. That's the only thing Pilot Edge does not simulate is a ramp control. So we're going to call ground next at 19.75. I'm going to get that in the box. Always set up your frequencies beforehand. It helps limit distractions when you're trying to actually taxi out. 19.75 and then tower. We're going to be going off runway 8. I'm going to throw in 18.7. So now I've got ground, tower, and my departure frequency is set over there on the first officer's side. All ready to go. Squat code's in the box. Now we just need to fire up the APU, cool down this cabin, answer some questions from chat, and I'll go over my pre-departure notes, make sure we didn't miss anything. Oh, wow, I scrolled those a little bit too hard there. Let's fire it up. Driver, what's going on, man? Does the Flight Factor 320 do that well? Do well the go around? Yeah, it's, yeah, it doesn't do a bad job on the go around, man. All right. Uh, let me look over my notes here. I filed flight plan, proper routes. We talked about that. Talked about shorthand clearances. We talked about the clearance limit. Familiarize yourself with the SIDs, the departures. Not a bad idea to familiarize yourself with the arrivals as well. Just in case you get a full route clearance. If you hear the phrase full route clearance, that means you need to be ready to write down because they're going to change your entire route that you filed. You're not gonna get that as filed. They're going to read you an entire route. And I've had full route clearances where I've been reading it back so long that the mic on the Airbus thinks it's a stuck mic and then deactivates the mic front. It's terrible. So just be ready to write if you get that. Ask for cl clarification if you need it. And then that pretty much wraps up the pre-departure part of my notes. The only thing left is vias. So now that we got the APU fired online, let me get the air blowing back here. Disconnect ground power. And make sure my sounds are up. I don't think the sounds are quite up all the way. Oops. I hear those packs kicking on. That is awesome. All right. Let's probably get rid of the ground handling. They can drive away. We'll watch them get out of here. All right. Approach or vias is what I meant to say. Anytime you hear the word via, so this is something you're going to hear in your clearance. This is something you're going to hear descending into an airport. What does a via mean? I filed this 577, Gerald McGinley. I think I should have. Anyway, I hope I hope it was 577. Did I, did I read back 557? So, people ask me, when do you have to comply with a managed descent or a managed climb or 
it all revolves around the word via. So in his clearance to me, he said climb in main or he said uh, climb via the SID. Via means I need to follow all the restrictions on the SID. We're gonna be going east or westbound, so we only have one restriction there, 1635 before we turn left out to Wolko. But the via means okay, I'm doing the entire SID. My top altitude, if I do not get one, which he did not, he said climb via SID, is going to be on the chart itself. Top altitude, 8,000, which reminds me we should set that over here. 8,000. Climb via means you have to comply with everything on the SID. If he says, you know, climb via the SID except maintain 5,000, my top altitude is down 5,000. Or if he says climb via the SID except maintain 250, then I'm going to maintain 250 knots. Whenever you hear that word except is when you're going to get something different. But anytime you hear via, you are now responsible for the departure or same applies to descents on arrivals. You will be responsible for arrival route deviations. All right, so we got 8,000 set there. Let's get this back on VOR needle. We can start closing up doors and sitting here yapping. We can remove the fuel truck. We can close all these doors up, close up the cargo. I love hearing this sound right here. We got Haley in the background. All right. Let's run a quick before checklist here, before start checklist. If you want to use American West livery, a tasty, absolutely, man. Exclamation point livery if you want to get the direct link. Gerald McGinley is the creator and author of this livery. So pre-flight checklist, maintenance log and tail number on board and check gear pins and covers removed. Signs. On an auto, eight years, nav, fuel. We've got seven required, seven three on board. And altimeters, that is one thing we do need to set. Aid us for pilot edge information tango. We said it was two niner and niner six. Niner six is set once, set twice, and set three times. Two niner six set EFB checked. All right, before start checklist, windows, doors, and slides, they are closed and armed. Beacon. We can go ahead and turn that on. Thrust lever is idle. Parking brake is off. Transponder is in TARA mode just for pilot edge purposes. Before start checklist complete. All right, we are not going to be pushing on to a movement area. So as we get ready to depart from the gate here, let me call the, we can hide all of them and better push back, start the push back. Ground to cockpit, please Perfect. show me where you want to go. That's exactly where I want to go, sir. Ground to cockpit, tow is driving up. All right. Movement areas on pilot edge and it's pretty similar to VATSIM, except VATSIM, I think they actually simulate ramp control. They want you to call for push and start. Pilot Edge, as long as you're not pushing onto an active taxiway, there's no need for you to call. I learned that the hard way uh, from several controllers when I was first starting out on Pilot Edge. Some of you probably remember that. Um, well, let's look at the 10-9A parking gates. So we have a little bit closer look at where we are here. We're going to be pushing off of Bravo 5. So I'm going to push off Bravo 5, and then I'm going to probably call up. I'll say we just pushed off Bravo 5, or we're sitting at uh, uh, November, spot November, okay. ready for taxi. Hatches are closed, ready to connect. Now, before you even think about calling for taxi, it is imperative that you guys review the 10-9 page. I call it a 10-9 page, or 20-9. The airport diagram will always be a dash 9. Dash 9B is going to be something a little bit more in depth, like parking stands or something like that. But the 10 dash 9 will typically always be your airport diagram. So if you have a list of stuff you want to you know, look through, you know, you're like, oh man, what do I find the airport diagram? Just look here 10 9, airport info, 10 9A, parking uh, info continued, parking gates, coordinates if you're flying the Concorde and you want to program your SIVA and so ultimate minimums and things like that. But the 10-9 blank will be your airport info page. So before I release the parking brake here, I'm going to review where I'm going. I'm going to expect runway 8 for departure, right? Is that what I said on Tango? Yeah, runway 8. So we're going to have to taxi all the way down to 8. I'm looking here. I'm thinking he's going to give me something, maybe Charlie 11 Bravo all the way down. Or he may give me Charlie. Charlie's this kind of inner taxiway. Give me Charlie. So I know Charlie and Bravo can take me all the way to runway 8. 
if he gives me a number, I know that looks like it's going to be some type of transition over. He may say, you know, Charlie via Charlie 8, Bravo. Then I'm going to come here, Bravo. Always review, exp you know, what you might get before you even think about calling. Brakes release your clear to push, sir. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. Captain Tom says you don't call in VATSIM in the U.S. unless you're on active. Depends on other countries, though. Oh, okay, Captain Tom. I stand corrected then. That is, that's cool. So in Europe, I know they require you to call for start or push and start, right? But, uh, yeah, so I haven't learned something there. It's, it's country dependent. The 10-9 is international, man. Yeah, it should be. And I, I'm pretty sure when we were in those other airports, it, they may be like a 20-9. I thought I saw a 20-9 somewhere in Europe when we were flying the Euro Tour. But anytime you see a dash 9, that's Jeppesen's code for airport information. But that is one of the biggest mistakes I see guys do. Even when I was teaching, you know, private pilot stuff, is guys call up ready to taxi. They have no idea where they're going to even be taxiing to. So when they get the clearance, it's just like... It's confusion. Have an idea of where you are and where you're going. X-Plane gives you a little cheaty cheaty. It actually shows you exactly where you are. I'm going to wait to start until he disconnects because I want to listen to the startup. We can talk a little bit more. All right. So we talked about looking at the 10-9 page before you call for taxi. Writing down a taxi clearance. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Brake set, clear, disconnect. Show me the pin out front. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. So... You can write down a taxi clearance. I'll be honest with you, in the real airplane, I use the scratch pad. So if I get taxi to runway eight via Charlie, Charlie eight and Bravo, that's what I'm gonna put in the box. I'm gonna go runway eight, Charlie, Charlie eight, Bravo. Now you guys can write it down with pen and paper. You can write it in the scratch pad. I highly, highly suggest though, that you write down the instruction. Now we talked about expected routes, expected taxi routes. You can listen on frequency, see if anybody else is is uh, you know getting a taxi clearance out. I'll turn my radio back on here. We are 1975. So I mean, you can listen to see if anyone else is getting a taxi route. One thing so you don't want to do. And bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see you next time. Have a safe flight. All right, thanks for the smooth push, buddy. We'll see you next time. So. You don't want to be expecting something so much that you read back something incorrect. Some of you probably remember my After Dark podcast. I talked about a pilot deviation in Washington National because I expected to hear something so much. It was so routine that I just read back something that was not what was said. So it's good to review, but don't be like, oh my gosh, it's going to be, it's going to be Charlie, Charlie, eight, Bravo, Charlie, Charlie, eight, Bravo. He might give you Charlie, Charlie, three, Bravo, Charlie, Charlie, nine, Bravo. You don't know. So don't get too ingra ingrained in what exactly it's going to be. Just have that general idea of where you're going to be going. All right. Let's fire these engines up. What do you say? Engine mode, selector, ignition, start. We got bleed pressure. Turn in one. Mm -mm -mm. What says V1? How do I find what the DH and MDA is on European charts? I can't seem to find them. They should be in the same spot, man, on, uh, if you're using the AV, AVI tab. They'll always be in the same spot on the bottom part there or on the briefing strip. You'll have a minimum section. If you're using uh, like, like the Europe custom charts, I know they got some other ones out there kind of similar to the US NAC charts. I, I can't help you there, man. I'm not familiar with those. Looking at the map is not cheating. There are apps that show your location. You're absolutely right, man. We don't, uh, depend on where you work from. Sometimes you may have it, sometimes you may not. I'm going to just go ahead and fire up both engines because it is hot. I want to get some maximum cooling in here. Let's fire up engine two. Albuquerque approach, MAS-14. We have the current information delta. MAS-14, Roger. Fly heading, uh, correction. Descend to maintain uh, 9,000. Expect visual approach from my 8 unless you think something different. Four, Look at that livery though, Joe, we're getting the good news. Captain Gio, what's going on, man? I 
Okay, looks like I gotta get started on engine numero two. There's Manual the other light. Maintain one three thousand. The Albuquerque three zero three seven. Flaps one, coming down. Flaps two, coming down. Three zero three seven. Flaps one coming down. Oh yeah. Jeremy, what's up, man? It says, I've seen Everyone speed restrictions from some PDCs, like, do not exceed 230 knots. Where does that get in the clearance as far as craft goes? That would be a part of your... 514, connect approach, 126.3. 514, 126.3. That, so you're talking about, like, well, if it's if it's in a PDC, it's going to be written out for you, right? So you, you have it written there. But I would put it just at the bottom and circle it. That's kind of like my shorthand. I write, I don't write the word craft anymore. I just write in the order of getting the clearance. And if there's something interesting like that, like a speed restriction, I'll, I'll write that down separately and then I'll circle it because I know that's abnormal. Now, when we get PDCs in real life, it's super, it's even more easy. You literally just hit the print button prints out of the printer right here you stick it right here on this glare shield and you have your entire clearance out so it, it's even easier when you have a pdc all right so i'm gonna go up to spot uh november there we can go ahead and get rid of the apu turn that off let's just roll it forward here we'll go up to spot number uh, new uh, november actually it is right yeah november and then we'll give them a call these are the BSS sounds. Why don't you start your engines during push? Because I wanted to be able to listen to it and not be talking. And I was talking during pushback. Absolutely love it. All right, so here comes November. Now, I could have a whole lesson on airport signage, but essentially, whenever you see a line like this, a broken line on one side and a solid yellow, that means you're entering a controlled area. If there is a solid, if you are on the same side as the solid line, like I'm going to get, I'll get up here close to it so we can look at it. I'll turn my light off. So, a little quick lesson in airport signage isn't the only one we're going to talk about. If you are on the same side as the solid yellow, that means you are about to enter a controlled area and you need to have clearance. If you're on the side as the broken, that means you're good to continue into that area without clearance. So, on the runway, you're actually going to have double. You have double solid and double yellow. And it's very important that you clear your entire aircraft's position when you're going in to a, a, a non-sterile area, essentially, like coming off of a runway. You want to make sure the aircraft is completely clear of that. All right, so we've got that done. Let's go ahead. We know we, what we're going to expect. I'll pull that up. Let's give them a call. Phoenix Ground, Cactus 577, uh, spot November, ready to taxi with Tango. Cactus 577, Phoenix Ground, runway 8, taxi via Charlie. Runway 8 via Charlie, Cactus 577. All right, so runway 8 via Charlie, just as we discussed. Straight shot, that's the inner. I'll even put this little C right here. As a reminder, brakes off, taxi light on, and let's get out of here. Is it true Southwest taxis Badger faster than other airlines? You bet, man. I've seen them rotating down the taxiway sometimes. PDC is a pre-departure clearance swappy, and what that is is it, it's automatically uplinked, or you can send for it via A cars. We don't have that in X plane, unfortunately. Although, on VATSIM, on the last flight, I don't know if you guys remember, but I received a PDC on VATSIM, which was cool. The controller pinged me, and he said PDC clearance, so I didn't even have to call ground or clearance delivery to pick up my route because he sent it to me via PDC, which is a, a, a text version of your clearance. And it's a lot easier because it eliminates having to write it down. I mean, you know, if you're an airline guy, or especially if you're a regional guy, you're doing five, six legs a day, writing down a clearance, every, it's just, it gets old. You could save a lot of paper and time and eliminate a lot of human mistakes by actually getting the, the clearance itself printed out and sent to the aircraft. So that's what I mean by PDC. Captain Epidemic, what's going on, man? Good to see you here. Do I know how to change the FAA announcements? I do not, unfortunately, man. I'm pretty sure there's instructions in the install that talk about that, but I haven't done it. Let's do our flight control check. Full up. 
Full measure down. Three, Neutral. Full left. Three, Full right. Is Neutral. Miles when three, oh, go. Full left. Full right. Uh, neutral, I didn't have my uh, disconnect switch bound there. You could <laughs> S-turn across the tack, so you don't want to do that. All right, so that is good. We'll go to auto brakes, max, take off config. That goes on. That's not modeled. Chance monitor is already on. Dang, the flight attendants come over here. Cabin ready. All right, another popular question is when to switch from ground to tower. Sometimes they're not going to tell you. Sometimes you'll actually have signage on the airport that says beyond this point monitor tower whatever it is. So for us it's going to be 18-7. But a, a good rule of thumb is don't change until you're past some ma a major intersection. Now it, it's it's really hard to to grasp that concept without having been in and out of the airport a lot. But I mean once I pass you know the West Hold Bay, if there's no airplanes over here. I'm just going to switch to tower as I roll up. In real life, they don't, they, you don't call up, say, hey, we're ready to go with the end runway 8 or whatever. They'll, as soon as you roll up, typically the controller is telling you, all right, Cactus 577, clear for takeoff. They'd expect you to be on frequency. But you don't want to get into a habit of just changing frequencies early because if there is a major taxiway, like see this Tango intersection here, I would never switch to tower before crossing these two major intersections because what if somebody's coming across? And even if I'm taxiing out here and I see a couple airplanes holding in the hold pad, I'm not going to change to tower until I pass them because what if ground wants to sequence one of them out for a, an edict time or something? So in this example with nobody out here, I'll probably go down to the West Hold Bay and then I'm going to switch to tower and then I'm going to put my departure frequency in, standby, so I'm ready to go. On our taxi out, let's go ahead and do our before takeoff checklist. Gross weight comparison is complete. Pitch trim is 0.3% CG set. V1, VR, V2 flex. We got 131, 133, 37, no flex. Flaps. Config. One plus F. Flight instruments, checked. Flight controls, checked. ECAM memo, takeoff all green. ECAM status, checked. PWS is auto. TCAS, code set, TRA, cabin crew advised. Mini brief is complete. Runway, real life, make sure you actually see the runway sign. I know we're going to runway eight. Confirmed fuel. Seven required, seven two on board. Engine mode selector is a normal. Bleeds and packs are set for takeoff checklist complete. I'm actually going to turn down the temperature is just a little bit because I know it's hot. So all right, we are pretty much ready to go here. Here's the West Hold Bay that I was talking about. This is the center. I guess there's one more, isn't there? There's one more. So I'll wait just a little bit further and then I'm going to switch to Tower 18.7. Plane Flight TV, what's going on, man? I heard funny stories about the penalty box at Phoenix. <laughs> what happens at the penalty box stays in the penalty box. I love this Mr. X Phoenix though, look at that, it just looks so good. Just looks hot and miserable out here right now. I grew up in Phoenix, so I can say that. I mean, that is hot and miserable out there right now. Any software or book I can use to learn practice ATC communication? Honestly, the best would probably just be to listen. Listen to liveatc.net. Listen to how the controllers interact with each other. It's going to be time on the radio. It's funny. Even those the vast aviation does a fantastic job of taking incidents or accidents and putting the ATC audio, and he does a little dub over. But sometimes I can tell where he thinks he's heard something, and he puts in the, the caption, but it's, it's actually something else being said. And it just comes from thousands of hours of being on the radio and listening to how people talk and say different things that you can kind of pick up on keywords. So really, the only thing I would really suggest is just to listen. Go to liveatc.net, listen to air traffic control, listen to Pilot Edge, you know, listen to the streamers that are on a uh, network if they know what they're doing. All right, so we got 18.7 in the box there as I go past the whole bay. I know my standby is 19.2 for departure. So I'm gonna set 19.2 in there. And we are ready, at this point, we are ready to go. I dropped my checklist, that's all right. Another tip that I would, I on my on the left of my notes, I have a little pro tip box. Thanks again, man, for helping us out today. We really appreciate it. 
Bunch one for us, not a problem at all. We appreciate you. What guys. you're going to say on the radio, practice it in your head. Don't just key the mic up and start blabbling. Be like, okay, I'm gonna. If he doesn't call me, I'm gonna say Cactus Five Seventy Seven, holding short runway eight, ready for departure. So I've said that in my head. So now when I go to call him up, I know what to say. Always have the thought and phrase that you want to say in your mind before you key the microphone. Because if you're a little hesitant or a little bit nervous, it's gonna, it happens to real pilots, man. They key the mic and you just freeze, new pilots anyway. So have what you wanna say in your head before you key the mic. That's another pro tip for you. So brakes are off, lights off. I'm sorry, brakes are on, lights off. We're holding short here, runway eight. We'll give him a second or two. If he doesn't call us, We'll let them know that we are ready for departure. I'm going to do take this moment to just quickly close that. Take a quick look here. We're going off runway 8, so let's make sure that we do have that in the box. Runway 8. Okay. Futep. Azcro. Massive. 220. Uh, somehow managed to crash the off on the taxiway. Uh, somehow. Anyways, uh, thank you for flying with us, and I'm just going to disconnect. Hey, not a problem. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for flying. See you tomorrow. Bye. All right. <laughs> All right. So we know where we're going. We're going off runway eight. We're ready to go. Let's give him a call. I know what I'm going to say on my head. I'll key the mic now. That tower. Good afternoon. Cactus 577. Holding short runway eight. Ready for departure. Cactus 577. Phoenix Tower. Good afternoon. Wind calm. Runway eight. Clear for takeoff. Runway eight. Clear for takeoff. Cactus 577. All right. There we go. We got our takeoff clearance. A little bit different than in real real life now. The new phrase is if you're on an RNAV departure. It's uh, RDAV to FUTEP, runway eight, clear for takeoff. That's just an extra step to verify. That's kind of hit or miss with some of the uh, VATSIM controllers or Pilot Edge controllers. And I don't know if there's a stipulation where they have to say that or not, but in real life, most of the time, you're gonna hear RDAV FUTEP, runway eight, clear for takeoff. And that I just kind of look down here and be like, okay, make sure we do have FUTEP in the box. Yeah, we're going to the right, we have the right SID loaded. Just another, another verification, right? X-Play 1972, what's going on, man? He says, been watching in the background here at work, picking up nuggets to sharpen my online game. Excellent, XP. Hey, Glad to have you here, man. Break, no voice. Check your mute button on the headset. All right, I'll pop out my PFD for you. We know where we're going, up to 8,000 no feet. Voice. Nose forward on the sticks, pull them up 50. Yoga. Mantoga SRS runway auto thrust is a blue. Enunciate the changes there. SRS runway auto thrust blue. 80 knots, thrust set. Work that pressure out. Neutral by 100. Unclear. Uh, V1, Up rotate. Plan to delivery, paint two zero. IFR to four corners, ready to copy. Paint two zero, Albuquerque. Uh, Fire engine airport, Largo three. Departure rattlesnake transition is final. Bye bye. Maintain nine thousand. Expect level two zero zero five minutes after departure. Departure frequency one two seven four. 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 Departure frequency one all kinds of juiciness outside. Zero, doing the Largo departure. I mean 9,000. Expect. There's our lever climb. And after five minutes, contact Just wait for a positive trend in airspeed. There it is. Cactus 577, connect departure. Over departure, Cactus 577. All right, departure 192. Three departure rattlesnake. Frequencies in there. Now I can spend time looking out. Oh. Zero, Largo departure, rattlesnake transition. Quick tip on departure. When you call, he just wants to know your altitude. Make sure he has, sees the same thing that you're flying. Departure, good afternoon. Cactus 577 for climbing via the Keens 2. Cactus 577, Phoenix departure, radar contact. Climb and maintain, level 200. Climb and maintain, fly level 200, Cactus 577. Okay, so change in phraseology there. He gave me a climb and maintain flight level 200. I no longer have to be in a... Alright, I'm in the altitude, climb maintain, flight level 210, Cactus 577. 
So he gave me a climb and maintain clearance. I no longer have to worry about 220 at 7,000. I can just pull, open climb, and we're out of here. I'm gonna leave the 220 right now just because I want no need to speed up when you're going the opposite direction, right? We need to be going eastbound, I'm sorry, westbound anyway, so there's no need to speed up to 250, even though we no longer have to abide by it because he said climb and maintain. That nullifies our VIA clearance that we had during our uh, clearance delivery conversation. That ortho is freaking nice. Let's do another flyby shot here. I swear, these IAE engines with Gerald's livery, they look freaking real. I mean, the whole airplane looks real, but... Good night. It's kind of following the turn, that's kind of cool. Step back from the window a little bit, it's kind of what you'd see in real life. Oh man, look at that. Straight juiciness. All right, one more flyby. Love it. Stanfield VOR, the stack over here. Used to teach a lot of holding. Where's Sandfield? Uh, here's the mountains. There's Phoenix International Raceway. Oh no, the stack is down here. Never mind. The stack is down here. For all my Phoenix fans, Stanfield VOR. This is where you'd set up for the GPS 4 right into Chandler, which is right here. Taught many a students how to fly that. All right, we've got to. We're above. Wow, we are above 10,000. Everything here. I'm getting up behind myself. We'll turn the lights off out of 10,000, ding the flight attendants out of 10. What is our yes, managed sir. speed climb? 303 knots, I'll accept that. We're going to flight level 210. Things are looking good, things are looking good. I like this window view, I mean that just looks straight up real. Albuquerque ground, pain 20, GA ramp. And this is, uniform. Pilot Peely, this is Fork Boy Ortho, Fork Boy. Just going over my notes here, make sure I'm not missing anything. Alright, here's another here's a tip about when we're on the radio. Let me go back to maybe behind the wing. Do I have a wing view on? I want to be on the other wing though. Yeah. So, let's say you are mid transmission and you mess up. Reading back a clearance or an instruction, you mess up. Do not stop and just like try to keep talking. Pause yourself. Well, that didn't make sense. Don't want to stop, but you do want to stop essentially. But if you mess up, don't jumble everything else up. Take a pause and say correction. The word correction will nullify what you just said before you said correction. So you're reading back a clearance and you realize you messed up halfway through reading it. I've done it a couple times here. Just take a pause, say correction, and then say what you meant to say. Now, if you are reading something back and you really messed up and you, you don't really know the correct way to say it, the tendency for new pilots in real life, and I can only imagine it would be the same for you guys getting onto a network for the first time, would be to just stay there with the mic button depressed. Do not do that. Get off the frequency. Let go of the microphone push button. Get off the frequency. Collect your thoughts and reattempt the transmission. Don't get that, that sense of panic and start blabbering and then and freak out. What you need to do is just get off the radio, get off the net, collect your thoughts. What were you trying to say? What do you need to say? 
and then rekey the mic and start again. But if you sit there and you're just holding down the, the push to talk button, it used to drive me nuts when I had a new private pilot students that would freeze up and they're sitting there with the microphone depressed. Meanwhile, there's you know 30 airplanes in the pattern trying to do practice touch and goes. No one can get their clearances. It, it's like get off the get off get off the mic get off the mic. So that's another little tidbit for you. If you make a mistake, just get off the frequency, recollect yourself, and retransmit. Goes back to that, uh, say what you were going to say in your head before you key the mic. All right, here comes 17.5. That's close enough to 18,000 set standards. STDs for you and me, one, two, and three. Seatbelt sign could come off. There we go. Jeez. All right, standard set three times for real now. Out of 18. Okay. 534.32. 134.32, Cactus 577. Now, this is one thing that I really like about the Airbus, the way the radio is, is, is laid out. And uh, most airliners are like this. I can change the freak, the standby frequency while I'm transmitting. Now, there's old airplanes that will not let you do that. So you got to be careful. But instead of writing down every frequency that I get, I write it in here or I scroll it in here while I hear him telling it to me. And then I read back what I dialed in. That will help m mitigate incorrect frequency changes. Donation. Andre Henry, thank you so much, man, for the $10 donation. He says, hey, everyone, just want to thank you for the encouragement. I completed my first VATSIM flight yesterday, and everything went smoothly. Keep up the good work. Andre Henry, dude, first of all, thank you so much, man, for your donation support here at the channel. Positive rates to you, dude. Positive rates in chats. Andre Henry, I'm glad to hear that, man. I hope many more flights will be on VATSIM. All right, here's our frequency change. I'm going to call up. I'm going to call, who am I calling? Center. I don't remember what center it was. Or this Al I think it might be Albuquerque, but I'm just going to say center. That's who I'm talking to. Who am I? Cactus, Cactus 577. Uh, just checking on now. Cactus 577, uh, two, uh, leveling 210. Cactus 577, Albuquerque Center, climb maintain, level 360. Climb maintain, climb level 360, Cactus 577. All right, so I said just checking on it's that's almost as bad as with you you don't want to say that but he caught me off guard there um bearded canuck thank you so much man for joining the channel exclamation point welcome dude welcome so when you do a regular frequency change like that it's a very simple it's who are you talking to when you key up so i'm talking to albuquerque center who am i cactus 577 and then what do I want? And this is where it'll be different. This is where if you're doing just a regular altitude handoff, like you're going from center to center, we're in the climb, I'm just gonna tell him the status. He already knows we're coming, right? So Albuquerque Center, I'm C uh, Cactus 577, 218, climbing flight level 360. This is where my pet peeve begins. Do not just check on and say with you. If you say the words with you, I will it just it's like nails on a chalkboard man I, I pull my hair out when i hear the phrase with you and it's amazing how many commercial airline transport pilots will even will still say with you in real life today i mean it just it's one of those things you're not with anybody okay you are an aircraft that is reporting its position and acknowledgement of the frequency change from the last sector that's what you're doing you're not with anybody and you're not looking for higher because higher is above you you're not looking for lower, because lower is below you. You are flight level 230, climbing 360, or you're leveling flight level 230. So those are those little nuances that it's easy to pick up bad habits. I have, I'm not perfect. I have a bad habits, so I, I will admit it. A checking on is not really a good one. I, I, I know I said it there and I'm, I have a bad taste in my mouth for saying it, but it's not near as bad as saying with you. All right, so that's a little bit about frequency handoffs. Now I'm gonna keep close attention to, this is a shorter flight, so I don't wanna to get too far away. So at 250 miles, we'll kind of start our prep our, our prep phase. Um, it looks like, are we gonna make 36 here? Yeah, 36 is our record. Zero, zero, pretty charged, is the runway number, so the actual taxiway that you're sitting at. So. Uh, I'm not sure intersection, intersection departure. Runway three, turn left heading 310. And yeah, we'll just keep climbing out in manage speed. That seems fine. Go outside here for a bit. We need to turn those sounds down. Yes, sir.
Hopefully that's better for you guys. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little bit less ortho, a little more airplane. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. I like seeing the ortho. When you have such a good livery and such good ortho, it's hard to choose. Jeremy says, what about when the tower or ground says, stay with me? Okay, Jeremy, this is where uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about this. Thanks for bringing it up. Retarded private pilot. you killing me, my friend. $2 donation. Thank you. He says, I'm not even going to repeat it. I'm not even going to repeat. I'm not going to repeat it, man. I will thank you for your generous donation. I will not say the words. I can't do it. I just can't do it, man. I, I, I even tried. I tried right there. Okay. Um, so when ground control, you guys are absolutely... I, I, I rewatched the last stream from, what was it, two days ago when we were in Charlotte. And the ground controller said... Taxi to the ramp. Stay with me. That is the only time, and I can't remember who it was, but he says, don't move the goalposts now. You said with you. It's, it's the only time you should ever move the goalposts because if he says, stay with me, the only way to respond with that is to say, okay, taxi to the gate with you. In that case, you are staying with him. That's the only way to say that. So I know you guys wanted to rip me up on that one, but that's the only time where with you is acceptable is when a ground controller says taxi to the gate with me or a tower controller, maybe they're working both frequencies, says taxi to the gate with me. Say, all right, we'll taxi to the gate with you. That is an instruction. It's an instruction to stay with him. You're not checking on with him. You are instructed to stay with him. <laughs> That was funny though. I watched the stream and I, I was able to see the comments from you when I said that. You guys were just freaking out. I swear you guys are just... It's crazy. Uh, D Dimitri had a good question. Here. How about not reading back the entire frequency but just about the last three digits? Yes, you can... I mean... I, I would I will say this, Dimitri. It's, it's a bad habit to get into because sometimes... You know, if you say it's... In a frequency like this, we're on 134.325. Now, yes, you could say uh, 3432 because the 25 is it's not really it's not associated because you could have 3432 instead of the, so in some frequency ranges it will work. You can eliminate the one, but. It just helps me personally collect my thoughts when I read what I see here. Now, if you're in a different airplane, I know some of the older airplanes, the military jets specifically, don't even have the... You can't change it. You can't change the first digit. It's just assumed, right? So I would say, Dimitri, while yes, it, it is possible, I would say that's a bad habit to form. You want to stay on, you want to stay reading the entire frequency if you can. Now, an exception, exception to everything, right? That's aviation. Tor, <laughs> thank you so much for the 100 donation, man. He says, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Ellerston, thank you so much, too. Uh, appreciate the super sticker. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, no, I was saying the only time, Demetri, where there's an exception to that is you'll you'll hear ground point niner. In the U.S., I will tell you that that is common. I'm going to back the speed off here. We'll go mock climb out because we'll never get the 36. I'm going to go seven eight climb. Um, in the U.S., it's very common to hear ground point niner or you know point seven. When you hear that. That is assuming all things are standard, which a standard ground control frequency is one, two, one point or decimal XX something. So when you hear 0 0.7, 0 0.9 or 21.9 or is the standard ground frequency, that's the only time really where that's acceptable. Otherwise, I kind of think reading half the digits is kind of a bad habit to form and it can get you in a bad situation and you could misread something. Uh, Lucas, uh, thank you so much for the uh, five dollar donation. And he says, "What does it mean when the controller says hold for release?" So, that's a good one. I I haven't personally had that yet, but a hold for release clearance is they are going to. It kind of goes back to our craft, right? 
they are going to hold you on the ground for spacing. Now that could be that, that would be a good question for Phantom 320, who is an air traffic controller. I, I don't know what other stipulations are that, that it could be. I, I would imagine weather delays, mostly traffic related. Maybe a, a storm had just come through and all the traffic was shut down, right? So now everybody's trying to go to the airport at the same time. You're going to get a, a, a major, major uh, traffic jam. So hold for release means we're going to hold you on the ground and they're going to give you a time when you're expected to go out. That is why when we talked about the craft, I said 99.9% .9 of the time, your clearance limit will be your destination because they're not going to let you take off not being cleared to your destination. They are going to hold you for release on the ground. But when you get cleared for takeoff, your clearance limit is going to be your destination. So you're cleared to LAX via blah, 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 blah. Hold for release. Uh, estimated departure time is 1920Z. So I know at 1920Z, that's my estimated time. And I'm cleared to LAX. But that's a good question, man. Good question. I think remain on this frequency Radar, is the Radar, correct Radar phraseology. <laughs> uh, you can say that. You can say remain this free. You can. You can. But technically, you that's longer. I mean, 2462. Okay, that's 577. Yeah. I think I'm getting some bleed over from COM2. There we go. So, LA Center. We are not with LA Center, we are climbing, and we are Cactus 577. LA Center, good afternoon. Cactus 577, flight level 340, climbing 360. Cactus 577, Los Angeles Center, good afternoon. All right, so that's it. Uh, we're climbing up to 360, we've got our, we're checked on with him, we're good to go. So, <laughs> you could, technically say you know remain with you or, or remain this frequency I guess would be uh, another way to say that but I will guarantee I will tell you this that if you say if the controller says stay with me um, honestly the real reason you're gonna get that is because it's probably late at night and you just landed and the tower controller is working every single frequency on the airport and you're tired as hell and you just want to go to the hotel so he says stay with me you're probably just gonna say oh, with you that's probably the only time you're really gonna hear that habibi says you should do a flight in 727 using the tech routes in california oh boy <laughs> some of the routes have a ton of uh, radials and vors are really fun habibi i dude tech routes would be the death of me man i remember doing those flying citations around southern california it just it's uh that would be a lot of workload something i would enjoy doing probably off stream but when i stream it's it streaming and flying is is like triple the workload to be honest with you but uh, <laughs> proceeds to read back two digits. Did I read back two digits? 2462. Yeah. That See, I told you. That's a bad habit. I remember saying it now, too. That's a bad habit. So don't listen. Don't listen to me. You could scold me. Have you heard a have a controller say you're not with me? Yeah, I've heard that. And I've also heard a pilot check on say, hey, we're level 360 looking for lower. And a controller said, well, it's below you. Or, you know, I've heard the opposite where, well, it's above you. So you're not looking for anything. Uh, but there you go, Dimitri. I had the wrong bad habit there, reading two digits. Paradise VOR, then as I maintain 6, what does information Zulu mean when getting clearance to destination? Information blank, whether it's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, all the identifiers, and this is, I think, I, I missed this. This is a good question. You want to call up clearance delivery with the current ATIS. That way they know you have the current ATIS. Now, sometimes the ground control may want to hear it too. I think I said it twice. I said ready to taxi with information uh, Tango, because that was our hourly weather report. Every hour, typically, you're going to have a new weather report that's going to come out, and they're going to have a, a letter identifier. So you call clearance, make sure you have the weather, and also ground, they may want it. So I just call ground with the in, with the weather information, Tango Zulu. Now, I believe Pilot Edge specifically, maybe the same for VATSIM, you guys probably know, 
I think information Zulu is reserved if you're using custom weather. That means they know not to expect the same exact stuff. To, they, you're not the seeing the same one stuff one they are seeing. Uh, Dave says, would you co do a collab uh, with Flight Deck to Sim? It be possible? Dave, I'd love to do one with him, man. I think it'd be a lot of fun to do a, you know, Airbus or a Boeing stream and just kind of put each other in the opposite seat, right? So if I was in the Boeing, I, I would be the captain, or if, if, I, if we were in the Airbus, make him the captain, and I'll, I'll run the FO side of things for him. I think it'd be, it'd be fun. But I think the biggest problem, though, is we don't really have a really good platform yet for multi-crew. I know there's some early stuff that, that there's some stuff that works i'm actually working on trying to get a multi-crew with phantom 320 who is um or, or used to be a, a first officer on the 320 so we could show you guys exactly how the dance works between a captain and first officer running the aircraft i think that'd be a lot of fun but uh, yeah i mean at some point i think that's our biggest limitation that this it's not really easy to do and it, it takes a lot of coordination and um but I would never, I mean, wouldn't be opposed to it. He's a great guy. I watched his 319 stream the other day. He's got a good handle on that bird already, so. Andrew Aker says, according to the FAA, FAQ, climb and maintain does not cancel speed restrictions unless explicitly stated. So are you talking about on the climb out when you get a climb and maintain, you no longer have to uh, delete the speeds? Yeah, you know what? I think you're. Right. I think that is correct, Andrew. Uh, what did I say? I said that we could delete the speed coming out of there at 220. Then I think. Let's look at it here. Max 220. Okay. Clear take. 16. Clear to the March Airport. For the Mormon Mesa. You. You know what? I, I think that is correct, Acre. Now, now thinking back on it, probably. A, a clearance would sound more like a climb and maintain uh, 210, well, delete the speeds. So if he doesn't delete the speed, you still have to you still have to maintain the 220 knots or whatever the restriction is. That's a good one. That would be a good one to ask Phantom as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's a good good point and one good good point that out too. Have you, man? What about uh, when people say say altitude and the pilot applies altitude? It happened to a kid in flight training. I heard on Daytona approach and ATC asked if your instructor was there. Oh man, yeah, you don't want to do that. You don't want to get smart with the controller if you can help it, man. Stingray 16, be the Mormon Mesa 7 departure. Mormon Mesa VOR Jet 107 Boulder City. Oh yeah, VOR that. Then I filed. I understand that is going in the wrong direction. Uh, Isn't there a smart copilot? Uh, I believe there uh, is, and I think that's what we're trying to to work out. Uh, I know Phantom and I are we're planning on trying to set that up next week sometime to have a test at it, but getting it to work and then getting it to work on stream is, uh, is a job in of itself. Edwin Lee, thank you for joining a private pilot, man. Welcome to the channel, dude. All right, we should probably, we're probably getting close here. 182. Oh, yeah, we need to start getting ready. So let's take a look at our box here, and then I'm going to have to use the lav. So let's get this thing set up first. Uh, Straight mode is on. Sure We're going to go K L A X. Is reading back frequencies incorrect? Like twenty six or twenty four sixty five? Like I was saying, uh, Sam. I think it's a bad habit to be honest Very, with you. Uh, Properly, uh, you want to read back the whole, the, you know, one two four point six five. Uh, because it it has to do with the last three digits past the decimal point where there can be confusion, like six two or six two five. There are certain radios and certain frequencies where you can get into trouble. Now in the Airbus, you're pretty safe, but like I was saying before, it's a bad it's a bad habit, man. It's a bad habit to read back a couple. We all we all have bad habits. I feel like the airplane's bouncing around. We'll turn the seatbelt sign back on. So try to read back the whole frequency. It's not going to kill you. Descend via the Hollywood One arrival, Los Angeles altimeter three zero zero zero. Descend via the Hollywood One altimeter three zero zero zero. Cactus five seventy seven. All right, so he just gave me a descend via clearance. So we should we're behind the eight ball here. Let's go ahead and get this loaded up real quick. Maybe I don't even have time to take a leak. All right, LA arrival. So, what did he say? Descend via. So, I am responsible for the entire VNAV path, speed and altitude. Bottom's out at sea view between 14 and 12. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bottom one there. I'm going to put 12,000 at 270 knots. 
and the Airbus should take it over. But this is where we're going to verify, right? So here we go. We're looking at our arrival. Hollywood, below 320. That's there. Avatar, day 17. Those are all in the box. That looks good. And then Sivu bottoms out, 207 knots, 14 and 12,000. And it looks like that is in the box there. So our altitude constraints are in the box. That looks good. All right, so nothing to rad nav on this one either. We'll leave that blank. We got KLAX in the box. Perf, next phase. Ooh, before we start down, though, I want to set my speed. We're getting bumped around, so I'm going to do 7-8. Is there an initial three, six, speed? Seven, max, three, tango. Not so really. So I'm going to do 7, 8, 300, just because I'm streaming and a little bit slower. If I get behind, it'll be easier to recover than if we start seven, blasting down. Let me zero, pick zero, up zero. the, we no longer need that. Scroll you back out. Top of descent just past Midler there. So I'm going to pick up the ATIS 4 LAX here on the Pilot Edge website. D Pimento, welcome to Private Pilot, man. Exclamation point, welcome for your more for more information on your perks now, dude. But thank you so much for joining the channel. Welcome aboard, man. All right, so LAX two fours, two four left, two five left. Let me just make sure I am remembering the airport layout correctly, since it's been a long time since I've been to LA. Yeah, we are two five. I'm expecting two five left. So that looks good. Weather down there, hell of a lot better than it was in Phoenix. Three zero zero zero. Temperature is two five degrees. Magnetic wind is two seventy at ten. Right down the pipe, just about. All right, and the approach. So if I expect two five a left, let's pull up the approach for ILS or localizer, 25 left, MDA, we're not doing a CAT 2 or CAT 3, so the DA is going to be 304 feet, we'll throw that in the box here, 304, MDA is set, config full, that is good, we're going to go auto brakes full, or auto brakes off, full flaps, reverse as required, 12,000 is set. We are approaching our top of descent about five miles prior is a good way to start it over. We're 33 miles out. So I think we're pretty much set up now. Good to go. Thank you for the subscribe, man. Appreciate it. Uh, rocks at Bird, man. Thank you. Uh, Andrew says, a point of contention. Read back altimeters, runways on takeoff, landing clearance, or no. Uh, what do you mean by that, man? What do you mean by that? Read back altimeters, runways on takeoff, uh, landing clearance, or no. Yeah, reading back the altimeter. Uh, some guys read it back. I read it back to him just because I think they want to hear it. Um, I don't think it's mandatory, though. Runways on takeoff. You do want to read back your, I always read back the runway number with your call sign. That's crucial. And definitely want to read back a landing clearance. Absolutely. All right. Deep Mental says, thanks. Gotten tons of knowledge from your content. Only fair to give back. Keep up the good work. Mental, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much, dude. For the new members, the FAQ section is still open for the podcast. It is the on the community tab. So this month it is open to all members, not just commercial pilots. You can get your question in, I will answer it in video format for you. Alpha Golf, San Bernardino Tower, 1250 at four, runway six, clear for All right, so we are just out from top of descent. I think I have enough time to run out and use the lab, 21 miles. I'm gonna let him know I'll be off frequency real quick here. NLA Cactus 577. We're going to be off frequency just for about two minutes or so. Cactus 577, Roger, report back. Roger. All right, so I'm going to be right back. A little bit too much tea. I will see you guys in a hot minute.
four, Charlie. I'm going to play a forward clearance. I'm working on it now. TBM 234, Charlie Limit Clearance. TBM 234, Charlie Lima, clear to the Loft One Airport via the State 3 departure, A for E transition. Direct needles, VOR, Echo Echo, Delta, direct. Climb via the SIT, accept maintain. Wow, no mic. You guys saved me. Thank you. 260, minutes after departure. departure that is why he didn't hear me. Oh. Squawk 3754. Wow. Great. Form of readback is correct, and hopefully that guy's done reading his clearance back. And LA Cactus five seventy seven, we're back on free, back on frequency now, descending via the Hollywood one. Cactus five seventy seven, thank you. All right, so I had my mic muted. Sorry, guys, totally uh, <laughs> unmuted. What I was saying is they've locked us out of the lavatory. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This would be a bad situation. You come out here, you can't get in the lavatory, then you got to take the walk of shame, which. If you're a member of the channel, you probably heard that podcast. Definitely embarrassing, man, when you have to take the walk of shame. Especially when you have to take the walk of shame the way that I had to do it. No bueno, man. No bueno. We are unmuted. <laughs> Cox 7600. We are back. We're back. We're back. Must have been an emotional trip to the lab. He's speechless. Oh, man. So... Out of, uh, let's see, where we are. We're Hollywood Thor 32. First speed restriction is brewing at 280 knots. We should be good to go here. Let's get back outside because, I mean, did you guys see this? Look at this ortho, man. Is that real life or what? <laughs> Ken Dilo, honey, I did not. I'm sorry, man. I was at the lab. Uh, he says, um... Thank you for the donation, man. It says, nice to see you again. See you at Air Hauler 2, going to join. Honey, thank you so much for your support and donation. Absolutely. Air Hauler 2, guys, if you have it, I'm not saying that you guys need to go out and buy it right now just to join the V1 virtual airline. It, the user interface is uh, pretty, you know, I, I wouldn't say, it, it's just not super user friendly. So I am going to be starting the a virtual airline for V1 Cargo. Uh, right now we have a couple pilots. All the information is in the Discord. Just scroll down to the freight dog section or the air hauler freight dog section and send a message in there if you already have it or not. Uh, if you are still on the fence about it, I'll tell you right now, don't just get it to join the VA because it's still a little uh, little funky. But as soon as we get a handle on the sectors and creating routes and stuff, 
I think it'll be really fun to kind of run another airline for you guys to fly for me, kind of like how we were doing with my repo pilots and stuff with uh, Project Fly. So if you do have Air Hauler 2, feel free to join up already. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun once we get get the, hand, get the hang of it and get going. What ATC? This is Pilot Edge. It is a payware ATC add-on. Does the fixed page work? No, it does not. Uh, but it does Cactus guarantee you service. 126.35, Cactus 577, good day. 126.35, so see, I read it back there. I did, I did it the right way. LA Center, good afternoon, Cactus 577, 272, descending via the Hollywood one. Cactus 577, Los Angeles Center, good afternoon. All right, so we're sending via. We're back on with him. Things are looking good. One quick thing we're going to talk about here, guys, on my notes for arrival information. So just like taxiing out, and I said, you want to make sure you know where you're going when you call up ground control. Save you guys a lot of headache and a lot of embarrassment. Brief your potential taxi routes back to where you're going to be parking. Ideally, we're going to park over here in the uh, Charlie 9 concourse. So let me pull out the parking gates as well. Uh, what is it? The Bradley Terminal. Load it up here. So we're going to go... Uh, I think they put a lot of heavy stuff over there. We'll go Charlie... Yeah, we'll do the Charlie 9. And we'll go to, we'll go to gate 55 Alpha. So just like calling ground on the way out... Brief this and look over this in route on your descent, okay? Because we're going to be coming in. I'm expecting 2-5 left. That's just how they land in L.A., especially coming up here slightly from the south. We're parking on the south side. So what do I got here? I've got two runways. This is something that we brief in real life pretty heavily. And, and I know I don't do it on stream very much. But we've got one runway to cross. We're going to hold short of that. We've got a hot spot there, hot spot 5, hot spot 4. There's a couple of different hot spots. You can read them. They're on the... Here they are. See 10-9-A page for a description if you want to read them. When, when you get a hotspot, it's when somebody's made a boo-boo already. And that's when they create a hotspot there. Or multiple people make the same mistake. Then they create a hotspot and they put it on the 10-9-A page. And you should read them. Some of them are actually pretty interesting. I can kind of see what this one is here. you got Hotel 5 and then Hotel 6. You don't want to taxi into the dirt there. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what hotspot 4 is for. But landing on 2-5 left, I know I'm going to turn right. Okay, so I'm probably going to take Hotel 8, Hotel 7... Depends how long we float this thing out. It is the float factor. Hotel 9. We're going to expect to cross Lima, Juliet, one of these intersections. Probably going to get a Bravo and then some entrance to the gate. I know I'm going to the Charlie 9 concourse. But just have a rough idea. It doesn't hurt to also look over here. Maybe that runway is closed. What if they give us the Norse complex? Well, then we know we got to double back and then we're going to have to do all this nonsense, which that, that would suck. Hopefully we'll get 2-5 left. Kilo, taxi, and we have a brief hotel, idea of what we're going to do. So we already looked at that. Just as important as as taxiing out is briefing your taxi in. Okay, so we're 22-4. Things are looking good. Day at 17,000. Things are looking good right now. Things are looking good. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Geo, what's up, man? You're over here at Eglin Air Force Base listening to the Jets' engines. Old music to my ears. Yes, sir. Honey says, I just uh, got Air Hauler 2, but in order to join your V, I need to create my company. Yeah, so that's what's confusing about Air Hauler 2 is you have to create your own company for your own pilot, right? But then you can take your pilot and join the virtual airline. So... It's uh, We were talking about it in the Discord. There is a join code in the Discord if you want to join in the Discord. Uh, it's a direct join code. So when you go to join VA, it'll ask you, do you want a code or do you want to go to the job search page? You just insert the code and it'll take you straight to the correct VA. All right, making sure I'm not missing anything else here. My notes, we talked about briefing the taxi in. We talked about possible routes to parking. Make sure your aircraft clears the runway, especially on a network. 132.37. Good day, Cactus 577. 
And we have information Delta. Approach, good afternoon, Cactus 577, 19 1, descending via the Hollywood 1 with information Delta. Cactus 577, SoCal approach, clear down, let's right, 25 left approach. Clear down, let's left approach, Cactus 577. So LA is a little bit different than everywhere else, they clear you from way out. I'm going to hold off on arming the approach because I'm still way out. But now I am cleared approach, so technically. We can set, uh, where's our bottom? I'm going to set the final for now, Lima at 1900, just so I, if I forget, you know, we don't go barreling down to the dirt. But we are technically clear approach, so we could arm it up here, but we are pretty far away. Look at that, we're 61 miles out, so I'm not going to arm it just yet. Start S-turning around. All right, here's transition altitude, three, triple zero, one, two, three, two, 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 set you as well. All right, three triple zero is set all the way around. I'm gonna just go ahead and we'll leave it in next speed restriction is 270, but I'm gonna so it doesn't speed up and we end up getting high. I'm gonna select speed there at 270 because that's our next restriction anyway. LA, they want to typically in real life they're gonna keep you going fast. Alcus, thank you for the two pound donation. I always get vectored approach in VATSIM. Is this normal? It is very common. A vectored approach is very, very common. <laughs> Honey says, I saw it. I'm joining right now, following you, working for you. We'll remember that when I fly the Airbus in real life. That's awesome, man. <laughs> What do I think about the Jar Design A320? I hate it. Constantly had issues with it. Asking me to activate while well, I already did that. Screens black out of nowhere. Uh, never had that on the air stuff. The Jar 320 is what I like to classify as just a fun plane. It is. Uh, it's not a realistic simulation of the Airbus A320, but it gets. I mean, if you just want to have fun, it'll get the job done. You can have fun in the in the Jar Design, but it is not a realistically simulated Airbus aircraft. I personally don't fly it. I have it. Um, I know a lot of you guys keep asking me to go take it for a flight. Maybe we will do a stream in it. Uh, some of you said after the newest update, it's gotten much better. I may do one stream in it just to see if you guys really, really want to see the jar on stream. I'll do it. Um, but I'm telling you right now, it is, it's not really a study level, level simulation of the aircraft. Thank you, uh, Elias, for the subscribe there. What is the normal distance to arm the approach? Uh, Vic, I like to be below 20 miles, ideally. I'd, sometimes you can really arm it out 30 miles or so. I know Chicago, long, straight in, nothing interrupting the signal. If you, The only problem with arming it way out is the aircraft may attempt to capture... Well, it will attempt to capture the localizer signal. And what can happen is, especially on a day like today, LA is pretty good, but I know in Philly this will happen. You're on the localizer and you're way out there but they'll taxi a, a heavy aircraft or something on the far end of the airport and it'll go in front of that localizer antenna and technically it doesn't have to be protected because you're it's visual now i think la doesn't do that but i've had this happen to me in philly specifically where we're on a visual approach we're following the localizer that like 30 miles out and they taxi an aircraft in front of the localizer antenna on the far end and then the airplane starts really s turning and then it has a hard time getting back on path that's just because we're on a visual approach, we should be flying visually, but we always back it up, right? So this example, though, is not necessarily why I'm not arming it yet. It's just because we're so insanely far away. I feel like the LNAV is going to do a better job of keeping us on track. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start slowing us down here a little bit. Once we get to Crane... Tower, MO2, I'll zero, go ahead and uh, and, and arm it. Flagstaff. Zach, thank you for the two dollar donation, man. I don't see a, uh, a message with it, but thank you. I appreciate it, man. Mo two zero. Klaus Neeson, welcome to Private tower, Pilot, man. Welcome. B is the Tolus three nineteen study level. Absolutely, absolutely, Tolus three nineteen to study level. Roger. Got the speed brakes out a little bit. Oh, why are those speed brakes? And ammo 250. 
Here comes 250 below 10. Let's go ahead arm, I'm sorry, activate and confirm the approach phase. 250 knots, we are selected speed. We are looking good right now, ladies and gentlemen. Long straight and final here for ILS 25. Uh oh, I hit Manage manual tower, throttle. Niner, Whoa. Niner, one five hotel holding short. Don't do that. One six right at Charlie. No, we're Niner, Niner, one five hotel. Van Nuys tower, runway one six right. Clear I know, for takeoff. I know, I know. Tripped out Clear the airplane there because I. Right, one five. How is the speed brake still out? Well, at ground now, two zero. We are at uh, the hangar. Request taxi with Delta. This ortho coming in here is on the oh. ground runway. Oh, we're getting bumped around. We didn't do our descent announcement. Seatbelts are on, we're below 10, let's light it up. Runway one six via Alpha, we are T6. We are cleared approach, so I'm gonna turn that light on. Hi from Denmark, thank you man. ATZ sounds really good, this is uh, Pilot Edge. How did the full motion sim go? It was good man, we're good to go. We're returning to the line on July 1st. How often do you auto land in real life? I got the Tool Street 21, the temptation seems strong to basically keep the automation until short final. Uh, pretty rare that we do auto lands. In the States, most common is going to be going into fall. There's a lot of low visibility days there with a temperature dew point get real close together. Or if the aircraft requires an auto land check, we'll do an auto land for it. But I mean, I've done probably a handful of them. It's not something very common. What is the Roger, zoom level? I, I don't know. This is Forkboy. This yes, is Forkboy Ortho. Video. So I, I don't... Uh, one maybe one of you guys in chat yeah, know the, the zoom level. The but this is all Forkboy. Alright, there's 8 sending 5. We'll keep the speed 250 for now. I'm going to anticipate going over to tower here pretty soon, so I'm going to dial that in. We're going to be landing south complex. 2175. So a 121. One. Wait. That's ground. Los Angeles Tower, South Complex, 12095. I'm going to have a frequency change here for you very shortly. I actually just got the handout to contact Los Angeles. 12095 for Tower. And you know what? Let's go ahead and arm the approach now since we're well within. Glide slope blue, low blue. Autopilot 1 plus 2. We are looking good. One two four Alpha Golf, Silicon Valley, Roger. Uh, you can expect that five and two five zero. Jablino, when is the proper time to arm the localizer? You're going to arm the localizer when you get a clearance to intercept the localizer only, and not an approach clearance. Because I got an approach clearance, I press the approach push button. That means I'm going to arm lateral and vertical modes. If I just press the localizer button, I'm only going to arm the lateral mode. So that's kind of the, the difference there. You're gonna when you get intercept the localizer, or you're on a localizer only approach, you're gonna press the low push button. Mostly 16 zoom level. There you go. Curtis says I'm late. Made the landing. Awesome, man. Uh oh, why are we turning? So this is why. So see, we're on. We just captured the loc. Now we're starting to do this thing here. This is kind of why I hold off on that. Imagine if we start doing that way out there. I may re-nav it. We'll see how she does. We're looking good right now. Cactus 377, Connect SoCal approach on 1-3. Uh, correction, 124.9 or 24.9. Was that for uh, Cactus 577? Affirmative, Cactus 577, Cactus SoCal Approach, 124.9er, 24.9er. 20, 124.9er, Cactus 577, thank you. All right, we just had something Cactus chirp off there. So Cat 3 Dual, I don't know what's happening there. Cat 2, Cat 1 is tripping around. See, we're too far out. Um, and approach Cactus 577, 5.5, uh, cleared ILS 25 left. Cactus 577, SoCal Approach, the LA Altimeter 3000. 3 triple zero, Cactus 577. All right, so there we go. I read triple zero just because three zero zero zero. I mean, triple zero. Technically, bad habit. Does it happen all the time? Yep. So you can see the autopilot was struggling there for the signal. It went cat three dual, cat one, and then you get that reversion, triple chirp. That's what that triple chirp was. This was reverting to cat one. I'm going to continue slowing back. I'm going to come down to... Uh, let's bring it back to 180. I was going to do 210, but that's you get in trouble on that, so... 
practice what I preach, right? 180 knots. We're on the glide slope. Things are looking good. I'm going to go a little speed brakes to help us out. Cinematic purposes here. Where's my wing view? A little bit of a frame drop there. As we kind of There's approach airport. phase at 10,000 feet for our company. Yes, it makes life a lot easier if you take uh, if you select speed and arm the approach at 10,000. Literal Games says thank you for the stream. Uh, thank you for the precious info. I appreciate it, man. Afternoon V1, have you ever been in an emergency situation? Yes, I have. All right. We are now, I think we're done. So, tower is going to be south 2095. So, prematurely uh, dialed us there. 12095 in the standby. We're doing manual brakes. There's VFE next, minus 10. We'll go for laps one. Still got the speed brakes out, still Five coming down. Now, this one, is one, the five, situation five, where this happens in real life, too. If you're not careful, you'll get bit here. I'm on descending on the glide slope, right? My glide slope has been captured. I'm trying to get to 180 knots. I got the speed brakes out. Well, the speed brakes. The speed brakes out. Look at my trend. I'm not really slowing down. So we still have time. We're still, I mean, shoot, we're still over, you know, seven miles or so from the runway. So we still have time. But if we start getting closer to this localizer and we aren't slowing down, we're going to need to drop the gear out of sequence. What is our touchdown zone elevation? Check it's 104 feet. Mechanic, Delhi, tower, 120 or 120 or 5, Cactus 577. Uh, LA Tower, good afternoon. Cactus 577, ILS 25 left. Cactus 577, LA Tower, runway 25 left, clear to land. 25 left, clear to land. Cactus 577. All right, so we're getting ready to be 2,000 feet above touchdown. We're not flaps two yet. Let's throw the anchor out. Put the gear down. I'm going to manage the speed up. I'm going to take control because I want to fly it in. Won't pay attention to chat anymore. There's our VFE next, minus 10, flaps 2. Ooh, see, that's why we do that minus 10 there. We got pretty close to it. SoCal 99015 Hotel, level 13,000. VFE next, minus 10, flaps 3. 99015 Hotel, Roger. I don't need to call once you level off. Hey, the, radar, the radar indicates it. And flaps full. I'm sorry, say again for 15 Hotel, over. No, 15 Hotel, I don't need a call when you level off. I can see it on the radar, the altitude's indicated. All right, so 1,100 feet yeah. is our 1,000 foot stable. We want to make sure we are stable for that. So you see what I mean? We're still struggling to slow down here. Definitely can get slippery coming into LA, but we got it. We're looking for 1,100 MSL is our altitude. So we are 200 feet to go from that. Looking good. We're stable. Oop, arm the speed brakes there. Cabin check. I uh, hate this option on the flight factory, but there we go. Cabin check. There we go. Now we're just flying an approach. We know we're going to exit the right side. Want to hold short of the parallel runway unless we get a clearance to cross. Los Angeles clearance, uh, Archer, November A13, Mike, uh, ready for IFR clearance to John Wayne. Drone post just in time for landing. Awesome, man. Welcome. Right. Don't pay attention to chat. You get off center line like that. Five knots right on the nose. Should have run a landing check. Let's come crew advised auto thrust speed. ECAM memo. Landing all green. Landing check. We are clear, clear to Airport, land. Seal Beach, eight departure. Seal Beach, direct. Climb via the Civic, that maintain 4,000. Departure frequency is 134. LAX and Chicago, the Flight Factor 720 with Mr. X, oh. LA, and Fort Boy Ortho and away. streaming. Seal Beach, eight, I can uh, feel the heat Beach, coming off my PC right now. 1173483813, Martin Pounce is 324 watching, only 176 likes. Yeah, that seems a little skewed. If you like this content, guys, please hit that like button. Helps the channel grow. 
Appreciate it. One hundred. Coronavirus free. Okay, here we go. Hundred feet. 50, We're looking good. 40, 30, 20. Retard. Retard. Drive. Where are you, yeah, runway? We there we go. Spoilers. One twenty-four point seven for one. Frames. Frames. <laughs> Reverse green. We're deselling. We'll take the next one. I'm not going to smoke the brakes. Seventy knots. It's your one zero Lima. Bigger set of departure. The time is one nine or five zero. Release your departure. Clearance void. If not within one zero ten minutes, because you change approved. All right, so we're going to turn left here. We don't want to turn right. We want to clear. Here's that runway hold short line I was talking about. Make sure your aircraft is clear of that. All the way clear of it. Point Magoo approach. Piper 124 off the golf level 6,000. And... 124 off the golf. Point Magoo approach. I know just from being here, we're going to continue straight ahead to Juliet. Keep rolling. Nice and slow. Wait to contact ground. Descend to 4,500, 2,999. Technically, we need a clearance here, so I'm going to just wait for him. He's busy. 126. Start the timer because we use full reverse. And... You want to straight ahead to Juliet for Cactus 577? Texas 77 Texas right via Hotel Juliet Charlie Crossroad at 25 right at Juliet and monitor ground. All right, uh, Hotel Juliet Charlie and uh, clear across 25 right at Charlie and monitor ground, Cactus 577. Okay, so he gave us Cactus a. Cactus 577, 25 right at Juliet. Ah, clear across 25 right at Juliet, Cactus 577, thank you. All right, so I even received it there. I read that Joshua one back, right? That gave you a full down, clearance there. I don't know. I thought they changed something. This would be a good controller question. I don't know. I think they can issue. I think that's legal now, where they issue you a crossing clearance and additional instruction. Uh, but so we know, well, kind of like we brief, right? We're going to go Juliet, Charlie, and monitor ground. Mm, typically, don't monitor ground until you cross the runway. So I'm going to stay on tower. I'm sure he's working both frequencies though, right? But we'll put it in the ground just in case. Monitor ground control south complex is 2175. So we'll dial that in there. And we're gonna cross, this says Papa, but I know this is Juliet in, in the updated version. So this is the outdated version taxiway layout here. We'll go ahead and light it up as we cross the runway here. Great butter, thank you, man. I appreciate it, dude. Before I forgot, fighting two seven five. We also get the APU prime up. One two four off the golf. About another minute to cool down. And bigger for the first crack number eight zero one zero Lima one thousand five hundred climb eight seven thousand. 8010 Lima, departure And once we are clear, we'll go ahead and turn the lights back off. And we're going to. And what's your name, I did? What's your name, I did? Monitor ground, 2175. We'll take Charlie Niner, Niner, which is the next one. Start the APU. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to LAX. When you switch on the timer, when you use full reverse. Yes, so you have to have a three minute cool down. That's why you want to start the timers for a three minute cool down. If you use idle reverse, you can shut it right down. Did I miss a frequency change? Any particular reason not to give yourself the bird on this approach? Dominic, not really. I was just following the ILS. So I had the ILS up. No need to. I was following the flight directors, so I'm, I can leave it on. You could have done it the other way. You could take the bird on, take the turn the flight directors off, do the bird. It's definitely an option. All right, there's three minutes. Yellow electric pump is on. Confirm two. Confirm. And feather number two. Spooling down. Ricardo says, Mr. Live will review. Awesome, man. Uh, barely readable. It's staticky. 
That's an old fault message there. Don't worry about that. We're going to turn left into the ramp area. We'll kill our taxi light. Pete 57. We should have gone to 57 because that was uh, for flight 577. I still have some kind of light on, don't I? Looks like I had a light on outside. Oh. All right, let's see how I can park this with the yoke again. We're just going to park here, 55 Alpha. So parking with the yoke is just so weird. We'll see how we do. Joshua approach one five three twenty. Need to go off frequency for two minutes. Over. Not bad. Foxtrot Tower Piper one two four Alpha Go for uh, nine miles to the east. Full stop landing. We have Echo. Yeah, one two four Alpha Go. Foxtrot Tower. Thanks for Echo. Runway two five. Clear to land. Clear to land. Runway two five. One two four Alpha Go. Break set. APU is available. It is available. Confirm that. Engine number one. Seatbelt sign off. 5% N1. We'll kill the beacon light. Look up. Thank you for the subscribe there. Appreciate it, man. Swap, yes. Thanks for your information. Stay safe, man. Take it easy, dude. Beacon light can come off. And we are here. Not a bad parking job for parking with the yoke. Not a bad parking job for parking with the yoke. So we'll go ahead and remember to disconnect from Pilot Edge. Disconnected. I'm going to throw you guys into replay mode. Let's take a look at that landing. Oh, oh, well, premature there on the uh, replay music. I don't want to do that just yet. Replay mode. Let's take a look at that butter. Flight factor butter, man. I'll take that. We'll listen to some replay music, though, since we don't have any good music to listen to. Captain Thomas says the cockpit on 350 is literally the most pale Airbus cockpit I've seen. It's so white. Ugh. Do the charts look like the real ones I use? Yes, they do, man. Wow, my frames are struggling today. I might have to go to Vulcan. Where are you at, Vulcan? Um, yeah, these charts are very similar to the ones we use. These are Jeppesen charts. Every company might be a little bit different. Wow, I'm getting like a hardcore stutter. Interesting. In case my PC melts, let's just look at it from the outside already. Pretty good over the threshold there. How did we do? How did we do? Still not enough likes? If you haven't hit that like button, appreciate it if you can hit it for me. Ooh, drifted there. A little off center. We got back on it though. We got back on it. Wasn't super pretty. Dougal view. This Mr. XLA though is freaking awesome. Russell, great team. See you soon. Take it easy, bud. Yeah, real view has been disabled this whole stream, so uh, it might just be a scenery loading issue. I don't know why it's doing that. A little stutter. It was definitely buttery. Nice pitch attitude on touchdown, though. That was pretty good. We weren't flat there. I've been developing a bad habit of having flat landings here from flying X-Plane. That's a good pitch attitude right there. Yes, sir. I'm right, backing up. Watch tower view. And I think that's going to start wrapping it up. Guys, I hope you learned something today. ATC, it's hard to really do full-blown air traffic control tutorial videos because air traffic control is something that takes a real pilot many hours of practice, many hours of study, and practical, uh, practical knowledge, essentially doing it in the airplane over and over to develop good air traffic control habits. I hope I at least scratched the surface today for some of you. If I can get just one of you to venture out on an ATC network and you have a successful flight, I've done my job. If you do indeed get out on a network, let me know in the Discord. I always like hearing this, of you guys uh, picking up something and, and giving it a shot. So 
I hope I helped somebody out there. If you have any more questions, feel free to ping me in the Discord or Phantom320, who is the air traffic controller in our Discord, so it's always good to talk to him about certain things. Mods, thank you so much for moderating the channel, keeping everybody in line. Sponsors, donors, thank you for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. Everyone else, I love you guys just as much. Hit the like button for me on the way out. Until next time, guys, you guys stay safe. Stay healthy out there. We'll be seeing you here on the Friday Night Ops coming up. I'm V1. See ya.